Hi guys, in this video you are getting a two for one. We are cooking up a Thanksgiving dinner for two using our 12 volt Road Pro roasting pan. Stick around to see how it turns out. Bring on the fire, bring on the rain, nothing can take you down. Crashing like thunder, steel in your veins, nothing can take you down. Let's get started. We are cooking up stuffed Cornish game hens with some mashed potatoes for our Thanksgiving dinner in our 12 volt roasting pan. We are gonna see how much power it takes also to use it. It's gonna take several hours and I don't know how much power it will take to do this. So we're experimenting and you're gonna learn at the same time as I do is how long this actually takes. Okay, so let's get our, let's gather our supplies. Very lucky that over the sink we have a cutting board. So it extends the countertop space. Plus, this little area here was flipped up, so we have extends it a whole foot. So I have an extra foot of countertop space and a place to cut the veggies right here over the sink. So that's really nice because we're going to need onions and celery cut up and the potatoes cut up to put in the roasting pan. So let's get that done. So I've got a little olive oil here and I'm going to oil my pan so things don't stick as easily. Or you can put some tin foil in the bottom of the pan. There we go. Here's the pan. I'm going to just oil it. Just makes it easier to clean up later. You don't have to. Or you can put some tin foil down inside of it. go. Pan's oiled. All right, so let's check the power station and see how it's doing because we're going to need power. This is the Blue Eddy EB55 and it's at 100%, so perfect. We're ready to go, we're ready to plug that in when it's time, so that's awesome. Okay, so let's get our stuff to cut up. I've got an onion right here. I keep my potatoes and onions and stuff right here. So here's an onion. So now I'm going to go, need to go in the fridge and... All right, so I'm going to need to go into the fridge to get my celery out. Got my celery. Okay, so underneath here is where there's a lot of dry goods. Trying to show you, but <laughs> hopefully the camera's not too wobbly. But I have a so here is stuffing. Oops, stuffing, and then I have some some chicken stock. Peppers, spinach, carrots, freeze-dried chicken. So there's lots of that type of foods under here. I forgot to show you the recipe on the back make this whole thing, you're going to use four tablespoons of butter, one cup of diced onion, about one large, one cup of diced celery, which is about two stalks, and then the chicken broth and the stuffing to go in the birds. Okay, now we'll finish cutting the onion. This whole thing's going into the stuffing, so I get on all that. Okay. Mm 
I'm not a professional chef, so this is how I dice onions. I know there's easier ways, but this is how I do it. Just take it in half and dice this half first. Just make them small. So when that's done, I always slide it to the edge of the count over the counter, so I can put my bowl underneath it like this, and then I can get them all in the bowl without getting. If you flip this over, which I should have had it flipped over because there's no like juices, so this this needs to be on the other side. Let me get that thrown away. Toss it. All right, let me flip it. I'm going to flip it. There you go. That's much easier. It's flat. There's no groove. Okay. Two stalks of celery. Well, I'm going to put three because it's they're not very big. I always take the little bit of ends off. Alright, here you go. Dice them up. And just dice them small. And through the magic of... TV and videos, this chopping is done. And through the. I love olives in my stuffing. I know it sounds weird, but my mom made our stuffing with the olives, so I love it. So I'm going to chop up the olives. These are little packs in these size of olives. There's like four in a container. I really like them for here in the van. Very handy. You don't have a whole can and the weight of it taking up space. You can also put cranberries in there. I like the saltiness and tanginess of the olives but I mean you can make your stuffing any way you want that's the beauty of stuffing all right that's looking good okay so let's put this all in our bowl There it is. So now we're going to put our stuffing in here. Cornbread stuffing, whatever stuffing you prefer. Throw it in the thing. And you're going to heat butter, and it says heat the butter, add onion and celery, and so you're going to add all this. You can you can um, brown your veggies first, but I'm not going to because this is being this is going to be stuffed, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So if you're doing it in the bird, it said. Loosely spoon stuffing mixture into turkey cavity. Spoon any remaining stuffing mixture into the, a casserole dish. Cover and bake for three, 35 minutes. 
Allow turkey to stand 20 minutes before moving, stuffing, and slicing. Okay, so we're just doing these little birds. But they gave you some ideas for to add to your stuffing if you want. They've got chorizo, they've got corn, green peppers, and even some cheese listed here. But you're going to put your butter and you're going to do your chicken broth. Four tablespoons of butter and two cups of chicken broth. And you're going to stir it all in. So we've got to melt the butter. So we're going to melt the butter, butter in our 12-volt pan because that's what we're cooking with. And then I'm going to dump it into the um, stuffing once it melts. So here we go. Okay, so I'm taking. I'm gonna plug in my into my Blue Eddy, the 12 volt. Okay, it's plugged in and using about 100 watts so far. Let's wait a second and see what it gets up to. All right, on the side of the roasting pan is an on switch. So that's on. Okay, so it takes four tablespoons of butter. This is all lined out right here on the side. So we're gonna melt that in the pan. See, that's one, two, three, four, which is a quarter cup. There you go. So this is going into the roasting pan to melt. And if you want it to melt quicker, cut it into smaller chunks. So I'm cutting the butter into chunks. All right. So I've got all this butter. I'm gonna throw it into the pan. And as you can see, it's already melting. So let that melt quick. It's melting. Okay, well that's melting down. I am going to add the chicken broth. So this is the chicken stock. It says around two cups, so I'm just going to start pouring until it starts getting moist, and then I'm going to add the butter. Really, you're supposed to add the butter first, but because it'll make it really moist. So, But I'm not going to get it super moist. I'm just going to start pouring. Stirring. You just Some just flung out, so it's about to make a mess, but yeah, it still needs a lot more, so keep pouring. And this is a seasoned one, a seasoned um, stuffing, so. In a minute, I'll show you what Derek and Gunnar are doing while I'm doing this. They're out playing. While I'm cooking, those two are out playing which is normally how it goes. Okay, so this is enough, moist enough. When I add the butter, it'll get even more moist. So this is good for now. I don't like it real dry, so here's what it looks like right now. Okay, let's see if the butter's ready. Yep, it's done. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the butter's all melted, so I'm just going to pour it in this, pour it into here. And it's okay if there's a little butter in the bottom of the pan. It'll be good to baste the bird with. Okay. Just got to get it off the edge of the pan. So it's not dripping everywhere, but other than that, it's ready to go. Put the birds in. Okay, stuffing's ready. Pan is pre let's shut it. Pan is preheated now, so we can put the birds, stuff the birds and put them in. There we 
we go. Stuffing is ready. Looks good. That's how I like it. Okay, so let's put the cap on this and put it away. is going to be extra stuffing that I cook later. Like after this meal, then I'll put the rest of the stuffing into the pan and I will bake the rest of the stuffing. So this the stuffing will not get wasted. It'll be baked in the same pan. So I'm going to get the birds out, but here is what the stuffing looks like. Yum. Okay, let's clean off our cutting board real quick. Because like with chicken and everything, with the chicken should be on plastic cutting boards. That way you can, if you're at home, you can put it in a dishwasher or something and sanitize it, but we don't. But I always sanitize everything good with some vinegar. So that's what that is, vinegar spray. Or you can use a little bleach water. All right, that's clean, ready to go. Okay, so I have one Cornish game hen two Cornish game hens to go in the pan. They will be stuffed with the stuffing and then there'll be potatoes cut up around them. So that's one thing I haven't done yet is I need to cut the potatoes. Everything off to the side so I can wash these first. You know we don't like to waste water around here, so I'm just giving it a quick, they're giving them a quick rub down, make sure there's no loose dirt, and that's about it. Okay, because I do not want to waste water. Okay, there we go. I'm just making chunks because I'm going to mash these later, so I'm just kind of cutting them up small. in the pan. I'm just going to start with one because I don't know how much room will be left in the pan until I get the birds in there. Okay, so I'm going to cut these open. Making sure there's nothing inside the cavity. And there isn't. It's a good amount of stuff too, a good amount of room in there. But no, there's no anything in there. Okay. So looking at the instructions, it does say Remove giblets, season hen inside and out with salt and pepper, cook 350 degrees for one to one and a half quarter hours, and add 15 minutes for stuffed hens. Okay, since we're cooking at 250, we have to go an extra 20 minutes. And I don't see, there's nothing in this cavity, so I don't know what they're talking about. Mm -mm, nothing in here. Okay. Anyway, there we're gonna season the birds. I'm gonna wash my hands before I touch anything else. All right, here we go. Salt and pepper it is. Here 
Here's some salt. And this is sea salt. We'll coat them pretty good because I like a, like it to be flavorful. Okay, it's good. It's seasoned up, ready for the stuffing. These birds are. Now with the meat, let me show you. You can see pretty much back here. You can see where things collect in the groove. So that's what the meat, it's for meat, the juices. So it'll collect in the groove. Get the stuffing so we can stuff these babies. Stuffing in the bird. And I literally just get in there. I put my hand in there and I just go for it. Make sure there's no, get out any extra, okay, water collected in there. And it's a small space, so you just gotta do the best you can. I literally just put my hand and start stuffing. You want it kind of loose, not super duper full, but Okay, one bird is stuffed. Okay. Okay, we're good. So these are done. And that will be baked, like I said. So these two are going in the pan. Second bird, so yeah, it looks like the potatoes might only fit like one, but we'll see. Second bird in. They fit, which is really good. Okay, people. All right. Let me show you. Let me wash my hands and then I'll show you this. Wash my hands again and I'll show you these birds. Okay, so we're going to watch it. We're going to do it for an hour and a half and then check the birds. Oh, we're going to add on. So if it's an hour to hour and 15, we'll say an hour and 15 plus 15 minutes for the stuff. That's an hour and a half. So it'll be about two hours for this. But we'll check it before the two hour mark. But let me show you. Okay, look at the birds in the pan. Aren't they pretty? here. Now this, what I keep in this, there is a little bit of bleach and there's dish soap water and a little bit of bleach. So this does have some bleach in it and that's what I use on the cutting board. So I'm doing both sides because I use both sides. OK. 
Okay, and then you rinse it. Try not to waste a bunch of water. Alright, done. That's why I really love this sprayer. There'll be a video on the sprayer coming up. Okay. Going on. Now you gotta put the clamp down so it's like an oven on both sides. There we go. It's they're in there. Okay, we're gonna leave them in there for two hours almost. All right, so let's check it out. So the it did fit two stuffed Cornish game hens and some potatoes. It was a tight fit, but we did it. We got her done. Let's go check in with Derek and Gunner. <laughs> he says, I love it. I'm outside. And I need to, I'm going to flip it over because it was pressed against the glass. So I need to get that side, the breast cooked. So I'm going to flip them over. Right, so let's flip them. I'm going to have to set this down for a second because I don't have it in the tripod right now. Okay, they're flipped. So I'm just going to season up the bottom. I took the potatoes out to flip them so it'd be easier. So I'm going to put some of the potatoes back. Some of them are pretty done, so I'll show you. Here's the potatoes. And a lot of them are done, and there's a few that aren't, so I'm going to put the ones that aren't done back in. I think Bella wants out. She smells the good cooking. Bella, hey, you f smell the good cooking? You go outside? Want to go walk in the sand a little bit? I'm gonna go get some fresh air. Get out of the. Get out of your little bed. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's go inside, old lady. All right. She's hungry. Okay. It's been about two hours, and they're pretty much done. So let me see how much power we have left. It's using 115 watts, and there's 40% left. So it did use over half of the battery bank. But if you have solar, you can charge this back up. Anyway, that not too bad for a Thanksgiving meal. And two Cornish game hens stuffed in here instead of just one. And mashed potatoes. This is going to be awesome. Hang tight and you'll get to see the finished product.
I ended up adding a packet of instant potatoes because one potato didn't seem like enough. So I just mixed it with the instant pack to make more potatoes. I'm starving. I'm starving like Marvin. Okay, well, go get at the table and I'll be right there with your plate. I set up a little table over there behind you to eat on. I know, Gunner. You smell it too. It smells good, huh? Yes, it does. Time for dinner. I know Gunner's like, I want some chicken. You can smell it. Okay, we got your little cup right there. A little bit of cup. wine. Got a little bit of wine in there. And we've got some mashed potatoes, Cornish game hen stuffed, and a little roll. Try it. Here we go. Here we go. I didn't get a napkin, huh? It's okay. I am not messy. Yeah, right. Let's see. I don't like the way you said. Okay, let's see. Those are good. Yep. Yeah. The potatoes are rocking. We're hitting the stuffing. Mm. That stuffing is spot on. That Cornish game ham, which is just a little chicken. I know it's stuffed. Nice dark is fantastic that stuffing is fantastic good on Let's on a scale a of one to ten <laughs> i says? give this a ten <laughs> good good stuff and it's all done in the 12 volt roasting pan you know that reminds me of is the uh, the traeger the Traeger is, is it's a great cooking device, but it doesn't put a sear on steaks and burgers. More like an no. oven. like Yeah, and that's literally what it is, like wood pellet oven. Mm, very good, huh? Very good. I would definitely let you cook this again. Was it? First time I roasted a whole little chicken in there. Right. I mean, I've cooked other things in it, but not like a Thanksgiving meal. Yep. Definitely gets hot inside that bird because the stuffing's uh -huh. hot. So, I mean, like, it cooked the middle. Right. I did have to, like, halfway through, I turned the bird over to make sure the breast got done. Like, uh -huh. I flipped it. And it that worked out nicely. A good idea. That way I make sure it would be done. Mm -hmm. Good. It doesn't taste any different than a chicken to me at all. It's just chicken. It's just species of chicken. I was trying to do a one. Like a one pot deal or whatever, right. kind of a one, almost like a skillet with fancy like apple beans on date night. <laughs> Got two straight, two. St well, people at Applebee's won't have this view either. Look at this, pretty. Look at the mountains and the sky. Higher leg right there. Little tiny, look at that. <laughs> Thigh. Except for you got a big piece in your mouth. King Henry the Eighth. I are my um. <laughs> Gunner, you're not getting bones of the chicken. You can have some of the meat though. He's like, look at him. He's like, I want some. You're such a good boy. He's the best boy ever, huh? He's the cutest. Yeah. Look at that face. He's like, I want to try the Cornish game hen. You've got like you're eating like <laughs> as you can see the sun's going down, it's getting a little chilly, but dinner was fantastic. I did add a little packet of 
mashed potatoes to the potatoes I had. So it just went a little bit further. But other than that, everything was done in the pan and it turned out fantastic. It was really good. So yes, you can cook a meal for two in that roasting pan. Let's go see what we have left on our plate. Look as dark, but here we go. Derek did pretty good. He almost devoured his. I still I have a, I still have like half of one. I ain't afraid of no chicken. But I'm saving room for the pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Derek said he's too full for it right now, so Give me about 30 minutes. <laughs> we might have some pie later, but right now we're full. But it, it did. It turned out way better than mm -hmm. I thought. Huh, honey? Fantastic. It really, really fantastic. Well, now you know. You can make Cornish game. You know, a small, probably, I don't know. What do you think? A, a definitely a boneless, like, chicken breast will fit in there with some veggies mm -hmm. or a small roast. But not a whole chicken. A full-size chicken would be very tough. Yeah, it, this pan is like a half a chicken you yeah. could do. But if you, you know, did a ham, a small ham. One of those canned hams? Yeah, that would work really well. Yeah. Definitely some, like a chicken breast or... You can definitely reheat in it too, so that's pretty good. Yeah. I've done a full breakfast in it before. It's handy to have if you don't want to use propane or get out a stove or anything like that. Yep. The sun is going down and look how pretty. Oh my goodness. Such a beautiful night. Wow, just wow. We definitely live in a beautiful area. We have a beautiful country we live in. My goodness, there's just so much to see. Definitely need to spend more time outside, guys. Everybody, get some fresh air, get out, enjoy life. You definitely don't see this staring at four walls. We hope you'll check out the links in the description box below for the 12 volt roasting pan and the Blue Eddy power station. So check out those links. From our tiny home on wheels to yours, we hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And remember, nature is the best medicine, so get outside. Ooh, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, there's a, li a little pie with a lot of whipped cream. <laughs> what? You want a bite? No, I'm good. No pie for you. No pie for you. <laughs> Remember the soup Nazi? But he said, no soup for you. No pie for you. <laughs> <laughs> so soup Nazi was Seinfeld. That was so, that's a classic one I'll never forget, the soup Nazi. Yeah. And then she was sneaking in or having other people buy it for her, and he yeah, caught on. He Remember, he yeah. caught on, and she couldn't get... Cut them all. <laughs> so Derek's the pie Nazi. <laughs> no pie for you! <laughs> Thanks for being part of our Van Clan. And if you like videos like this, be sure to watch this next video. It's when we were stuck in the rain and we had to make the best of it and we cooked a great meal in the van. See you next episode. Bye.